Yeah, it's Killer Ace. My real name is Ali Cham. I'm a rapper, I'm an activist. Back in the Jammer regime, it was really difficult when I released a song against the government, which was called Kuboka Sigetegi Nancy Meomi. And that song basically spoke against the injustice, the corruption, the brutality, the arbitrary arrest, detention. And uh, what made the song different from the other songs was that I mentioned Yaya Jamis' name in the song, like straight, you know, to the head, like straight to the point, like Yaya Jamis, you know, which was never done. So basically, from there I had to go into exile in fear of my life as I was targeted, you know, along with my family. We all grew up in um, such a bad dictatorship and um, my father organized a protest um, demanding for electoral reforms and they got arrested and subsequently um, a lot of them got tortured and he subsequently died. Um, my name is Baba Haidara, son of the late Deida Haidara, um, who was assassinated by the ex um, dictator Yaya Jame in December 16, 2004. He was very, very critical of the government. They shot a lot of bullets. It was so bad that with the blood, you cannot even recognize him. I uh, used to be uh, uh, serving a life sentence in, uh, at mile two for printing and distributing 100 t-shirts calling for an end to dictatorship. It was during the course of my reporting uh, on political issues I got arrested. So I wrote the story and did an editorial. So that article did not go well with the authorities. I was arrested immediately. And the editor who published my story was also arrested. A lot of people just you know, found their ways of speaking out and then it was protest all through five months until um, a few months to election and then election we put it out to the dictatorship, yeah. There was a lot of euphoria, excitement that finally a dictatorship was toppled and uh, it was done uh, largely peacefully through the electoral process. And we thought uh, the first priority for the government was going to be institutional reform to change the constitution. Initially, we defended the government to say, give them time. But now we have realized that other than uh, doing away with Jamme, they're essentially using Jamme's playbooks. There is a need to come with a new constitution that will reflect the current realities of the Gambia. That's why we have the CRC. And our mandate is 18 months to deliver a new constitution. You know, I don't think nothing else has changed. It's the same system, same constitution, the same people that were working for the former regime, they're still here given key positions. We watch the TRRC on TV and we see murderers are still in the system. There is a deep sense of frustration, especially among young people who fought for the new democratic change. How do we handle the issue of the former members of the government? Why is the new government still working with people who were accused of human rights violations? Junglers were well known at the time because they were the ones conducting most of the killings, most of the torture. One after the other, they were confessing of very, very serious crimes. Government actually is kind of neglecting some of its stakeholders that is the victims. I'm a victim, neglected by the system, I'm a victim, rejected by the system, I'm a victim. Then my dig on my dala, I'm a victim. Guaranteed non be a corrupt, I'm a victim. Neglected by the system, I'm a victim. Rejected by the system, I'm a victim. Then my dig on my dala, I'm a victim. Guaranteed non be a corrupt, I'm a victim. Did you have to push him on his knees? We held his hands. One who held the other one hand, and, and the other held the other hand, and we pushed him on his knees.
One word that was really a big issue was amnesty. Gross human rights violation can never qualify for amnesty. You are not going to tell me that you want to reconciliate people with murderers. Guinée Conakry, Mali Bamako, Burkina Faso, all they come and find fish in Gambia because that is, Gambia is all blessed. It's, it's blessed, yeah. And the fish also, the fish coming out from different places and to come, yeah, to come to the the, the river. This year, there is no fish actually. Even the fishermen, they are crying. And before. From here to 15 miles, 20 miles, you have big fish. But now, you must go more than 40 kilometers, 50 kilometers before you see good fish. Can you see? Yes, small small one. Yeah. Chinese company, actually, they, they spoil this. They are spoiling the sea because of it's not interest our, of our country. The Chinese big fishing trawlers are in the Gambian waters fishing. This has resulted to many Gambian local fishermen losing the number of fish catches they have. Fishing trawlers, if you go from the sea here, it's more than 200 fishing trawlers from the sea. Gambia and China has been in relationship bilateral level for many, many years, until 95, a year after Jame came to power. He terminated. So immediately after the change, the new government also re-established close ties with the Chinese, so Chinese came back. But I can tell you, uh, before, their activities were not as high as how they are at the moment. The Chinese realized that the new regime is uh, looking for uh, money to do a lot of things, and usually Chinese uh, financing does not come with any strings attached. And this government, because of their eagerness to get their support, has also um, allowed uh, companies to come that did not care about the impact of their uh, investments on the environment. But who cares now? Is it the Chinese or the government? Because the Chinese are given license by the government to do this. In return, the government of China will give you grant, will give you loans so that they can do their clandestine uh, businesses, but at the end of, at the expense of the poor masses. These are young people who don't have those opportunities back home and believe that when they come to Europe, they can have those opportunities that they never had and explore those opportunities for the better good. I decided to proceed to Libya to try my chance to Europe like any other Gambian. So from Libya, from the desert to Tripoli, it took me one month, uh, two weeks. I got arrested there, which I considered myself to be lucky because those who were trying to escape end up being killed. I have a lot of friends, childhood friends who left. Some died, some are there, some are making it, some are successful, you know, and are changing the lives of people back home. They took us to prison with no sanitation, no toilet, no water. We got beaten any time before we got deported back to Gambia. Under President Jammeh, Gambia was among few countries that top the list of people migrating to Europe, but still young people are migrating because they have not seen the economic opportunities that they think can change their livelihood. One of the main factors of that is poverty. You see the bad leadership, you see the bad governance, you see the lack of jobs and employment out here. You understand what I'm saying? You see the corrupt politicians who are squandering millions that are meant supposed to go to the youth. So at the end of the day, if we had everything that Europe had, we would never go to Europe. People are still being oppressed. Uh, freedom of assembly is a problem still. 
like when we go out to protest, we are targeted. We are, you know, um, we, we have to face the, the, the policemen in uniform with tear gas just for being peaceful, you know, and that's not what we fought for, you know, and um, as a young Gambian brother, you know, in the society today who fought for change, this is not what we expected. And we've seen the uh, president now uh, talking, even using the mannerisms that uh, Jamme used to say whether you like it or not, I will be here. We believe that this government should have just been the bridge from the dictatorship to the democracy and we all work together, you know, but now, you know, it's all selfishness, they're all fighting for power, you know what I'm saying, everybody's for themselves and we forgot about the main agenda of trying to build a new gambit. It's supposed to be a transitional justice, but in this transition I still can't see no justice, still feeling hopeless deep down, I'm so disgusted, two years gone, nothing has been discovered. I was a new mindset of Gambians with a new mentality, Gambians that are informed, aware, that's where it all starts. Without that, we're just going to keep on going back to the same system.